You booked your next cruise. What do you do now? We're going to talk about what to do from right after your booking all the way through to right before your cruise. Let's go. Now let's start with right after your booking. The first thing is that we assume you already have the time approved off from work, but make sure again that your boss knows exactly when you're going to be gone and that the time is on the workplace calendar. You sure don't want any surprises come cruise time. And if you forgot to ask for the time off, just put it on the work calendar. Maybe your boss won't remember. In this early stage, you want to make sure that your passports are not anywhere close to expiring. For what we call a closed loop cruise, which means you leave from the United States and you come back to the United States, it's usually not an issue. But depending on your itinerary, it could be because some countries will not allow you entry if your passport is within six months of expiring. So be sure and check for that and get your renewal paperwork started. This is also a great time to start researching your hotel and book as soon as you can. A great place to get feedback on hotels in different port cities is on TripAdvisor or your Facebook cruise groups. Is it just me or is there a Facebook group for everything? Make sure that you post what your budget or your target price point is so that your cruise compadres can give you relevant feedback. Also check on events in your port city. Most cities have a website where they will have a calendar or a list of special events. They've got festivals and dances and conferences and pageants. It's very important to check so you'll know how far out that you need to book. This is also a good time to start researching your flight. Depending on how far out you've booked and which airline you fly with, you might could even go ahead and book your flight. Also, don't forget about the air to sea program that most of the cruise lines have. That guarantees that you will make the ship even if your flight changes or is canceled and the cruise line will ensure that on their dime. This is also a great time in the early stages to make a reservation with your pet sitter. You want a good pet sitter? If you're not sure how to find a good pet sitter, check out my video in the description box below. Now this one is true for every month after you book. Make sure you start checking your cruise planner items for sales. That means your dining packages and your excursions or your drink packages. They usually have sales right around every holiday, so make sure you keep checking back. Remember, if you've already purchased and you see a lower price, you can always cancel and repurchase to get the price break. If you've gotten any value out of this video, go ahead and click the like button and subscribe for future videos. Now we're getting closer to our cruise date, so now we're about 40 to 60 days out, and this is a great time to start looking at scheduling your pre-cruise COVID tests. Remember, there's always the big three, CVS and Walgreens and Rite Aid, the pharmacies, but it's best to have a backup plan because people have gotten their pharmacy reservation canceled and that's no fun when that's the only thing you're depending on. Also, don't forget about the home test kits. Make sure you get the right one. Most of the cruise lines that have an approved test kit will have it available on their website. This is also the time period that you might be able to start checking in online. Most of the cruise lines have an app on your smartphone that you can check and some of them even tell you exactly the day that you'll be able to check in online. Also keep an eye out in your Facebook cruise groups. Your cruise compadres are great at keeping other cruisers alerted to things that are going on for your specific sailing. You can also go online during this time to check your preferences. As you go into your cruise planner, you can change or update things like your bed choice. Do you want your beds together or do you want them separate? Your dining options and your dining time, your credit card assignment, and the users who are allowed to charge on that card account. And of course, you've been checking all along on the prices for your excursions and your dining packages and your drink packages. This is the time to confirm those. Go ahead and purchase if you haven't already, because up to your cruise date, again, you can always repurchase if the price drops. But you also have things like special occasion decorations for your cabin. So make sure you continue to check the cruise planner for items like that. Now we're down to about 30 days out. This is when you get out your cruise planner folder or your notebook or whatever it is that you use for all your paperwork. And you'll probably be able at this point to print out your luggage tags. Go ahead and put them in your plastic covering if you use those. And if not, put them in your cruise folder so you can fold them up and staple them on your luggage from the hotel. I usually also go ahead and print out my hotel reservations, my flight information, as well as any excursions, whether ship or third party information that I might need in paper. You never know when you might not be able to get cell service to call it up on your cell. Better safe than sorry. Okay, now we're very close. We're down to one or two weeks before your cruise. And this is when you start getting really excited and start mentioning to strangers in the grocery store 
that you're going on a cruise in a week. Yeah, don't act like you don't do that. I know you do. This is the time to go ahead and get on to USPS.com and stop your mail. You can put in a date for it to stop and a date for it to begin again. And you can also make the selection of how you want to receive your mail, whether you want it all back in your mailbox or whether you'll go to the post office to pick it up. This is also the time to get all your grooming appointments done, your hair, your nails, your spray tan, whatever it is, make sure you have your appointments made and that you get there on time. You also need to call your credit card company and notify them that you'll be traveling either out of the country or out of the usual towns that you use your card in so they don't all of a sudden shut off your credit card. You also need to make sure that you have plenty of prescriptions. We usually make sure that we have prescriptions for every day of our cruise as well as a, as a few days extra. We've all heard stories of whether it's weather related, a hurricane or a fog or some kind of illness or virus that makes you stay over a few days on your cruise. You certainly don't want to do without your prescription medication during those days. Also make sure you set up your vendor scheduling like your yard work or your pool maintenance person. Get that all set up before you leave. This is also the time to pay attention to your grocery purchasing and your cooking schedule. You certainly don't want food sitting in your fridge or in your pantry that might go bad while you're away on your cruise. So make sure you make your grocery list appropriate for the time you'll be gone and clean out your fridge before you leave. This is also a great time to start packing your embarkation day bag and make sure your cruise folder is right there with it. Reminder, 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 do not forget your passports. If you forget your passports, you will not be cruising. Usually a week before our cruise, I already have all those documents we talked about earlier printed out and along with our passports, I put it all in the cruise folder and it's right there on the main table so I know I can't forget it. If you're not sure what to do first thing when you get on the ship, check out this video here about embarkation. And if you love all things cruising, check out this playlist here to see videos from our recent sailing on Symphony of the Seas. Be blessed.